Now is the time. This is the hour. Ours is the magic. Ours is the power. Now is the time. This is the hour. Ours is the magic. Ours is the power. Now is the time. This is the hour. Ours is the magic. Ours is the power. Hello people of the internet and welcome back to another video. Yes, I I bought these candles and uh, these balloons for this one video because uh, I don't really know why. Halloween's not even like my favourite holiday. But it is currently the month of October. Spooky season. Boo. Ah, you know, that shit. Now, one of my favourite spooky movies would be The Craft, made in 1996. Now, The Craft isn't like a scary movie. It's not, it's not like your traditional October Halloween stuff. But I enjoy the movie. However, as Hollywood loves to do, they want to milk that shit. What did they do? They made a sequel slash soft reboot of the movie called The Craft Legacy. Now, it is not Halloween. I am filming this on the 29th of October, but I am planning to upload this on Halloween, hopefully. So let's just pretend that it is Halloween because it's Halloween for you, but it's not for me. To celebrate this holiday, I wanted to buy a spooky cake, but unfortunately, they don't sell spooky cakes, so I just bought a chocolate cake that I am going to eat while I commentate because I am, I am hungry. Fucking rude, okay? So I have watched The Craft Legacy and I have some thoughts and opinions on them. Most of them are not good. The one thing that I will say before we go into this review is that the movie is better than the trailer. And that that's a compliment, I guess. That's the that's the only real good thing that I have for this movie is that I was less disappointed with what I watched compared to what was in the trailer. So I guess that's a good thing. So I just want to make a couple of observations within the trailer. First thing, they have that scene where the main character, Lily. Uh, gets a Polaroid picture of Nancy. That's not in the movie. Also, the last scene where... Oh, hold on, let me find it. Be careful. Our weirdos out here. We are the weirdos, mister. That, that line, uh, or that scene in particular, isn't in the movie. They, they, liter they literally filmed scenes for the trailer. <laughs> that aren't in the movie. Now granted, that quote, that phrase, it's in the movie, but it's not that scene in particular. But we'll get onto that later. So what I am going to do is that for the first part of this video, I am just gonna break down what happens in the movie, give my thoughts and opinions on it, and then I'm gonna do kind of like a deep analysis and compare it to the craft, the original 1996 version, because honestly, this movie really is kind of a soft reboot slash sequel. I would, I would want to know what someone who hasn't watched the original craft would think about this movie without watching the original movie, whether they would be inclined to like it more or not. One thing that I will say about this movie is that it is not the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. However, it does not compare or compete 
to the original 1996 version. So the movie starts out and we see three girls who are practicing witchcraft. Uh, they're called Tabby, Lords and Frankie. They start attempting to do magic but they cannot do it and they say it's because they need a fourth. They cannot do magic without a fourth. So already we're setting up the plot of this movie. One of them wants to be able to perform uh, mind reading, being able to talk to people through telepathy, you know what I mean? See, this is why we can only do basic magic. We've never had a fourth. I mean, it's like how many times have we tried to telepathically communicate? <laughs> One of them wants to do that, but they cannot do that unless they have a fourth. Then we switch to the point of view of Lily, who is our protagonist in this film, and she's in the car with her mother, and they are moving into a new house because uh, Lily's mother is getting remarried to a guy named Adam. They move in, and we meet Adam's three sons, Isaiah, Jacob, and Abe. And after we get introduced to them, there is the weirdest fucking transition I have ever seen. It is so unironically funny. Like, it's just so sudden and dramatic with the music. Like, bull! It's just... The transitions in this movie are fucking fantastic, okay? <laughs> so Lily is upstairs in her room with her mother and they have a conversation and we learn that Lily has never had any friends before because she's just so shy and quirky and ooh, ooh, I don't know how to talk to people. Oh, ho, 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 ho. And then Lily's mother says this. Your difference is your power. Your difference is your power. Which I'm just going to say. Remember that line. It's important. We then cut to school and Lily is just sitting in class and she gets her period and it drops to the floor. Listen, I am a female with a vagina and has had periods before. Now listen, accidentally getting your period, like I can imagine that scenario being fucking traumatizing, right? But never in my life have I had such a heavy flow that not only do I, not only does the blood get through the knickers, but it also gets through the trousers, but, and it starts dripping onto the floor. Maybe I am just lucky in the sense that that has never happened to me before, but never, never have I ever had a period so heavy that it starts dripping onto the floor. Do people know how periods work? It's not, it, do, the only time, the only time that something like that could realistically happen is if there, you've got an overly heavily flow. You should probably see a doctor about that. Or, you know, you're lying down for eight hours straight and not moving. So because of that, the blood kind of, States. My point is being the only time the blood has surpassed trousers and drips onto the floor is in my bed because I'm laying in the same position for eight hours. She's sitting on a chair for 30 minutes. I, ju <laughs> I just don't think it's realistic that it would be dripping, dripping like water. <laughs> Hello, this is editing Natalie here to tell you that this video is sponsored by the spot on my forehead. One thing I just wanted to point out that I didn't mention in the video was that as someone who has periods and like if I'm wearing like a pad, I can feel the blood leave my body. That's a thing. Ladies, trans men, non-binary folks, you ever sneeze or cough and you feel it, you know? I just find it shocking and surprising and unrealistic that 
Lily bled so much blood that it started bleeding on the floor and she didn't even feel it. Maisie, shut the fuck up. Anyway, that was my point. Anyway, so obviously, like, the girl is mortified. Justifiably so. And she goes to the bathroom and she cries and the group of girls walk in. You know, the witch girls, they walk in and are like, oh, don't worry, girl. Everybody does that. Every single girl has had that experience before, you know. And Timmy is a dick. Forgot to mention, Timmy, the guy who uh, makes fun of Lily for having her period, is this movie's version of Chris. We'll get into him later when he appears, okay? So the girls give her a pair of shorts to wear and then they're walking in the cafeteria and they all all get weird looks at them because they're obviously weirdos. Lily then just stops and starts to play with her necklace and then all the girls like oh my god it's the symbol it's the symbol in the craft book oh my god the acting is so fucking over the top that's the thing i'm not too sure what the target demographic age this is meant to be i feel like it's meant for people slightly younger than me maybe like 13 14 something like that and it's just I only really see over-the-top acting like that when it comes to children's works because obviously over-the-top acting is needed for the children to understand what is going on. However, this is a movie about witchcraft and is not for children children, so I feel like this type of acting is unnecessary for this film. Lily comes back home and she's exploring the house's library and... It's here that we learn that Adam is like this motivational speaker for men and he has a book about like masculinity. In case you're wondering, we're living in the woke era, 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 I don't fucking know. We're living in a woke time period right now, so... I'll let you interpret what this masculinity book is meant to represent. A door then closes behind her and then Lily gets scared for some odd reason because another person is in the house even though she lives with five other people. She then hears screaming coming from a door and the screaming is meant to sound like a girl dying or something. I mean, watching this movie... Uh, I already knew that it was not a girl dying screaming, but she she walks up, it's very tense, she opens it, and it's one of her brothers masturbating. This scene does nothing for the film, I don't know why it was added, I guess it's just, hey, teenage boys, they touch themselves sometimes, I don't know. She then goes back to her bedroom and finds her pair of jeans that she stained on her bed or cleaned. And she's like, oh, mum, thank you for washing my jeans. And then her mum's like, I didn't wash them. Maybe Adam did. Now, obviously, it's implied that it was the girls, the other girls who washed her jeans, and I'm very confused by this and on how, okay, they washed her jeans and then placed them on top of her bed. Did they use magic to wash the jeans and then like teleport it onto the bed? Or did they just wash the jeans normally and then break into her house to place the jeans? I don't know. <laughs> But I am going to assume they broke into our house based on um, what happens in the movie. She's then exploring the house again and then she sees a snake and then it kind of triggers her to have like these flashbacks or visions. I'm not too sure which one it is. We just get these flashes of images and Lily gets really scared. We then are back at school and Timmy... Uh, then approaches uh, Lily and says some really pervy shit. You know uh, what helps with cramps? 
sex. And, well, because he just said that, uh, Lily is a cool bitch and just flicks him into the lockers. And then the girl's like, oh my god, I can't believe she just did that. She has magical powers, oh my god. Now, because she did that, she gets sent to detention. And when she's in detention, the girls were able to telepathically talk to her. If you can hear this, you are fourth. And because she can hear them, she's the fourth. Because they said that in the earlier, in the movie, that in, to get fourth, to talk telepathically. Ah, can't you see these connections, these links? They all join together. So they have a talk in the hallway and we kind of learn that Lily's power is more of a natural talent uh, rather than the other girls who sort of practice it to get the power, which is kind of cool because it's sort of like what it was in the original movie, but not really. Anyway, so they just, they just leave detention. She never gets trouble for not coming back. She just ditches detention. Faces no repercussions. They could like they could have they could have like done like a spell or something to be like, oh, make this teacher forget that Lily's meant to be in detention. Ooh. But no, they did not. They just ditched detention. And they're now walking into the street and they all talked about how they all thought about like flinging Timmy across the room. Tell me you didn't think about throwing his ass off of you. Yeah, I, I did. Well, so did we. And then BAM! But I didn't get that impression. Like, they're, obvious, they're obviously referencing the original movie with that um, vagrant in the street who chases Sarah down and then he gets hit by a car. They all thought, get him, let him get hit by the car. But the thing is, is that with the directing and the cinematography, the way that it's done in the original movie, they have like shots on all four girls' faces and have them act in a way that's like, ooh, I want you to get hit by the car. So that when later they say, hey, did you think about him getting hit? And they're like, oh yeah, it makes sense because we saw that direction in the movie. However, in this, we did not get that. We simply got Timmy being a perv and then Lily pushing him off and only after that event did we see the close-ups of the girls faces but they looked more shocked like oh my god she just did that as if like they didn't think that they also thought that it, it's just bad directing really. We then learn there are four stages to witchcraft. Number one, being able to move things with your mind. Number two, being able to talk to people telepathically. Number three, being able to freeze time. And number four, shape-shifting. Keep this in mind. The girls then question Lily's ancestry, but Lily doesn't know her ancestry and her mother doesn't have any powers. They then go out to the forest to perform a spell and I don't know why, the girls didn't tell Lily what to say before they started the ritual, but they didn't. They then chant and then they freeze time and it's like, oh cool, we have magical abilities with the completed coven. We can now do shit. Woohoo. They then decide with their new powers to put a spell on Timmy. So they break into his house they go into his bedroom, uh, Lily sees a Ouija board in there, and in order for them to cast a spell on Timmy, they need something of his physical appearance. And you know, instead of getting a hairbrush or something, Frankie finds a, um, a, um, a tissue with ejaculation on it and then uses a bong as a cauldron to make the spell. They put a spell on Timmy to make him into a better person and then pour it all over his bed. Now I don't know why Frankie is doing the spell. I feel like because Lily was the biggest victim of Timmy Turner. Uh, Lily should do the spell. Like, like in the movie, it was Chris who fucked Sarah over, so it was Sarah who made the wish to fuck Chris over. 
So I feel like it should be Lily doing it, but like, whatever. We call upon the goddess of holy mysteries. Frankie calls upon the goddess of holy mysteries instead of Menon, which I found interesting because this is this is like a sequel or like a soft reboot and like they do Manon is mentioned in this film so I do not understand why are they not praying to Manon because that's where like the witches get their power it's through Manon. Manon is not mentioned by the girls in this film. The way that they get their powers is unexplained. It's just like oh they chant shit and that's it, but the whole higher divinity who gives him the power, not explained at all. It, it's compl- You're meant to know it through watching the original film, okay? Timmy then comes back home, and so all the girls um, jump out through the window. However, Lily stays for some reason. I don't know why. I do know why, That I for the reasons I will explain. However, the way it's executed as poorly. She stays and then Timmy like is about to open the door and Lily's able to freeze time. That's the reason why she stays in terms of the the way it's written is so I can't fucking form English sentences. The reason she stays is in order to freeze time in order to demonstrate that Lily is powerful enough to freeze time on her own and does not need the other girls to freeze time. That's why it's done. However, the reason why she stays in her ro- in the room is just like, oh, I don't want to jump out a window. It's it, but it's it's not like Lily. It's not like Lily knew that she would be able to freeze time. It's just, it's just poor writing, really. We then get a montage of them practicing magic so like the light as a feather stiff as a board is like only a three second clip we then have tabby using her fire powers in order to combat sexism by lighting lockers on fire and there are auras in this movie the girls have auras colored auras they then do that ritual in the bathtub it's a lot shorter scene than what it was in the trailer Special effects, not that good. It looks it looks weird. And then there's some homophobe bullying an LGBT kid. And so Lords, who is trans, by the way, she then turns the, the homophobe's kid into a rainbow jacket. Ha ha, very funny. They then are just chanting in the middle of the lunchroom in order to freeze time to just mess around and shit. It's just, it's basically them just using magic for the sake of it being cool and fun and whoop-de-fucking-do. We then cut back home and then we have Adam telling Lily off for assaulting Lily and then Lily tries to jump in and defend herself, but then Adam is like, don't interrupt me when I'm speaking. However, he then doesn't speak again. (laughs) Like he's like, don't interrupt me when I'm talking. And then the mother starts talking. Like, he doesn't... <laughs> he, he, he was like, don't interrupt me. But then he doesn't carry on talking. Please don't interrupt me. Uh, okay. Thank you. I don't know why. Lily then goes outside and talks to Abe, one of, like, the sons. And then Abe is like, oh, Adam is just showing you tough love. And that Adam has always said power Power equals equals order or some shit like that. We also learn that Lily doesn't know her father. She doesn't even know his name. The next day, the class is having a sex ed lesson. And one of the guys makes like just like inappropriate jokes. And then Timmy is like, bro, dude, not cool. Okay, you can really like trigger some people. They put a spell on Timmy to make him woke. Timmy has now transformed into woke Timmy. And then Timmy starts fucking talking about gender politics and the hetero normativity <laughs> and all this f- they turned him woke 
<laughs> like I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating. Catch you guys later. Girls. Women. Yeah. No, I don't. women with an X. <laughs> they turned him into like a woke king. <laughs> it's. <laughs> they turned him into a woke king. It's then after school and the girls are getting ready to go to a party at Timmy's house of all places and Lily gets a text that says it's from your mom as if as if we need like I've never I've never received like what do you mean your mum why why do you have to specify your can't you just put mum at the end your mum it's it's a <laughs> Who, whose other mum would it be your mum? Like, oh no, this isn't from your mum. This is from Frankie's mum or Tabby's mum. I don't fucking... <laughs> it's just stupid things like that that I like to call out. They then go to the party and there's this blonde bitch who makes fun of Lily for having her period. You know, way to go, fucking girls making fun for women for bleeding every month because that's something that all biological women experience. Lily then goes off to the bathroom to go cry and then Frankie does like this thing where it's like boom and then her head goes boom because witchcraft and stuff. <laughs> Lily then bumps into woke Timmy and then woke Timmy apologized for being a dick and then all the girls come rushing in and then they're like, oh my god, I want to fuck woke Timmy. <laughs> Lily and then woke Timmy have a conversation. And woke Timmy confesses that his mother is dead and that he likes to talk to her with through an, like, an Ouija board. Referencing the Ouija board Lily saw in his bedroom. And that the necklace that Timmy wears around his neck was actually given um, to him from his mother. So we get like some character development, you know. If you want to give teenage characters depth, just kill off a parent, okay? Disney does it all the time. I decided to light a candle for absolutely no reason other than lighting a candle. I've got, f I've got like 15 candles surrounding me right now. They then become friends and then we're back at school and like Timmy is part of the squad and the, they're walking down the cafeteria and all the people give them weird looks because Timmy and the girls aren't the type of people to hang out with each other. We are then back at Lily's house and they start to play two truths and one lie. Wait, you don't like Beyonce? No, bitch. I love her. The black girl loves Beyonce. Have never seen that before in a movie. It is then Chris's turn and then Chris admits to of having sex with Isaiah. Isaiah and I hooked up. Who was Lily's stepbrother. And then we get this emotional scene of woke Timmy confessing to being bisexual and that it's okay to be bisexual it's okay for guys to like both girls and boys and i have no problem with this scene at all so it's, it's a great message because i feel like a lot of the times bisexual men are just kind of perceived as being gay a lot of bisexual people are just perceived as being straight or gay and then bi for flavor you know we then cut to the evening. The girls have left the house, but Lily's in her room alone and Timmy has left his jacket upstairs and Lily decides to grab Timmy's jacket, go to her bed, cast a love spell and starts masturbating with his jacket. While she's doing the devil's tango with herself, Chris knocks. Did I keep calling him Chris <laughs> because they're the same person, okay? Woke Timmy walks into the room because, like, Lily cast a spell and, like, 
she like summons him so he comes upstairs being like hey hey have you seen my jacket and then Lily's like no I haven't seen your jacket while her his jacket is laying on her crotch anyway Lily gets out of bed and uh they have some sexual tension they then kiss and then he leaves Lily then goes to bed and she wakes up in the middle of the night and she sees like a shadow in her mirror and in the corner of the room and you know it's a very slow intense scene music's building up you know we, we oh 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 it's desire just sleepwalking in the house and then Jacob the other brother comes in it's like Isaiah are you sleepwalking again come on let's get you back to your room this scene is never explained just so we're aware <laughs> We we don't get an explanation for this. Or we just get oh there's like a weird aura going around round in the house cuz desire is sleepwalking. We don't get an explanation to why he just does that. <laughs> we then cut to the next day at school, but woke Timmy isn't there. He's not in school. And Lily's like looking at his sister, like, where is he? And then the teacher comes in and says that Timmy has killed himself. He just, he just dies. The last, the last, the last scene we see woke Timmy in is him just leaving um, Lily's room. And then we don't see him again. We don't even see his death scene. We just get told that he dies. The girls then all rush into the bathroom like, oh my god, did Timmy commit suicide because of the spell that we did on him? Then Lily confesses that she put a love spell on Timmy. And then all the girls being very supporting friends are like, oh, well, this is all your fault. <laughs> they take no responsibility for themselves. Obviously, obviously the reason why Woke Timmy killed himself is because of Lily, right? Obviously. And they talk about how she's treating magic like it's a game. Was all of this just like some game to you? But like, none of them have used their magic for like strictly selfless reasons. Like they all collectively decide to pause time in the lunchroom just to mess around and do shit. Like, none of them do anything that's like, oh, wow, we're using our powers responsibly. Like, they they do minor selfless things, but it's really just to make themselves feel better about themselves, really. They're fucking hypocrites, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, even when they put a spell on Timmy to make him woke, they weren't doing it to, like, wanting to better Timmy as a person. They did it because they had enough of his fucking ass and wanted, you know, him to leave them alone. They did it for selfish reasons. Then the girls just all collectively decide that they shouldn't use magic anymore. Lily then wakes up again in the middle of the night and goes downstairs and see Adam doing like this weird ritual thing. It's not a magical ritual though. It's just a bunch of men clicking their fingers. It's then even later into the night and Lily's exploring the house and she finds Adam's family crest that has snakes on it and because of that she's like reminded of the flashback slash vision she had again. By the way, these flashbacks or visions are never explained. We only see like snapshots of them, but the thing is is that we never get a full detail in what they represent. Like usually in a movie, if you if you're going to do like a flashback thing with like snapshots and it's very unclear, what you do progressively throughout the movie is that you add in longer clips to make it more sense and then by the end 
you show the entire clip of what it's meant to show so that all clarity is made. But we do not get that. We do not know what happens in these visions or flashbacks. I don't know which one it is, okay? Lily then wakes up and concludes that Adam is a dangerous person based on the flashbacks or visions that she's had. Lily is then doing snooping for whatever reason and finds some documents of herself and she discovers that she's adopted. She and her mother then get into an argument and then her mother says her birth mother didn't want her to know that she was adopted. Who is your birth mother? It was the one condition that she had that I never revealed to you. And she's... She didn't want you to know. Now, it was at this moment in time that I was starting to see a connection here. Because this is meant to be a sequel to the original craft. And I was thinking, how, how are they going to do... How are they going to directly make this a sequel? And then I thought, Lily's ancestry is unknown. I wonder who her mother is. We then attend Woke Timmy's funeral and Lily tries to talk to the girls, but they're just like, no. And then Lily walks away. Her mother tries to talk to her, but Lily's just upset at her mother that she just, ugh, she just, she urs her. And then her mother falls to the ground and then everyone sees and then, Lily leaves in a rush of panic. The girls see how dangerous Lily is. You know, what happened to our number one rule of the craft? If a person is a danger to herself or others, they will be bound. That was never mentioned in the... This is the first time we're hearing about it. This was... The, what happened to the number one rule of the... We weren't told the number one rule of the craft. Is that like a deleted scene? Was that it? Was that in the movie originally, but they cut it out? Because we weren't, we weren't told about this rule. <laughs> you can't just throw in a rule saying what happened to the rule when we've never heard of the rule before. <sighs> All Lily did was make people fall to the floor. I don't know what you classify as dangerous, but you can make someone fall to the floor by simply just like sticking out your leg. You know, it's this, it's practically the same thing. I wouldn't really call her dangerous. She's not a danger to society. And Frank, Frankie is one to talk, but she, cause she did the exact same thing at that party where it was like, oh, oh, oh you know, that, she, that is basically the same thing. Anyway, I blew out the candle because I'm a fucking dumbass and it's a wooden bookshelf and I was burning my fucking shelf. I could smell wood and I was like, what the fuck is that? That's just me being quirky. <laughs> but then Tabby is like, um, we're no better than Lily. We also contributed to like mind raping Timmy. So like they then they then decide to not only bind Lily, but also binds themselves from not being able to do magic. We prevent ourselves from doing harm. We relinquish our powers from this day forth. Lily is then outside with her mother, and then her mother starts talking about how her power must be a burden to her. That your legacy was a curse. It was at this time during the movie that I was suspicious. Because, going back earlier in the movie, the girls talked about the four stages of witchcraft, and the fourth one was shapeshifting, but we had not seen the girls shapeshift. So I was thinking in my head, hmm, I don't think that this is her mother. Anyway, her mother is like, you know what, your gift is a burden, you should give it to me so that I can take on your burden. Now you can see why your difference is dangerous but i need you to say it with me lily in the name of manon i give you my power and i was thinking okay this is adam pretending to be her mother just so that he can steal lily's powers 
And you know what? I was fucking right. My mother would never tell me my difference is dangerous. Stop. Adam then punches Lily unconscious and they do a fucking KO transition. <laughs> And transition it to a fucking KO battle. <laughs> the transitions in this film are wonderful. It's only it's only that one and the earlier one that I mentioned that they're in transitions that I think are brilliant, but <laughs> anyway, woke Timmy is able to talk beyond the dead using the Ouija board, telling the other girls that Lily is in danger and that Adam killed him and he didn't kill himself. Lily wakes up in the middle of the forest and she tries to use her powers against Adam but she can't and somehow Adam knows that the other girl did a binding spell on her. I don't know how he knows, I'm just assuming because he's like this grand wizard and stuff. That he just knows that kind of stuff. You see that's the thing about girls with power, Lily. They're always too weak not to use it against each other. That... That's... That... That's literally the plot of the original movie. <laughs> that... that That's literally the plot of the original craft. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know if this is meant to be like... Like a subtle reference into like Adam being like sexist or something being like oh well women are too weak to use their powers against each other and it's like a subtle nod to the earlier film because in the movie that's what happened and adam is just being an ignorant male but i think i'm just trying to find reason within the film that doesn't exist i want your power one thing I don't understand is why does Adam want her power? He's meant to be like this great grand wizard who is very, very powerful. Why does he want the power of a 17 year old girl? The only powers that she has done in front of him is being able to push people onto the floor. He's like the supreme cult leader with immense power, but he doesn't have the power to be able to push people onto the floor using magic. So I guess that's what he wants. He wants the ability to push people onto the floor using magic. That's the only conclusion that I can come to. Lily is powerful enough to like freeze time on her own, but other than that, we haven't we haven't gotten any like references that she's like the super duper powerful witch who has greater power than Adam. She's she's just like slightly above average in witchcraft, really. So yeah, I guess Adam doesn't have the ability to push people onto the floor. So that's why he's doing it. The real mom, she's tied up too, in a different way. It was at this point that I, I had my suspicions, but when that line was said, it was basically confirmed to me of who her mother was. <laughs> Lily is able to freeze time again because the girls undid the binding spell and then appear in the forest fucking Avengers style. Adam's eyes then turn black because that's what happens in every young adult supernatural film. And he's able to freeze time because he's oh so do powerful. He can do anything except push people to the floor using magic. You girls ought to be careful in the woods at night. A lot of weirdos out here. We are the weirdos, mister. I will say that in this scenario, it's less cringe than it is in the trailer. But it's still like big Riverdale vibes of cringe, you know? Like it like it reminds me of uh Jughead's 
scene, the bean, the beany scene. You know what scene I'm talking about? In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. I don't wanna fit in. Have you ever seen me without a stupid hat on? It's weird. It's funny when I think about it because um, Skeet Auric, who's in the craft, is also in Riverdale. It's a small world we live in, really. Anyway, they do this spell to entrap him in this circle thing, what he's he's able to break through it, which I'm kind of glad, because uh, if they had just defeated him in one go, that would have been really anticlimactic. However, the way they actually defeat him is also anticlimactic. He then flings the girls off to the side, which I'm confused about because I thought he wanted Lily because she has the power to make people fall, but yet he has the power to fling people across the room. Honestly, Adam's just greedy. He wants all the power. Like, he can already fling people, but he just wants the extra stuff of being able to make people trip over themselves. He then says his, like, villain monologue that all villains say in all movies ever. He says he killed Timmy because Lily made him in his own image. You see, Lily, power is order. It belongs in the hands of those who understand it. Timmy's a good example of that. Until you tried to make him in your own image. So then I, I had to kill him. I don't know why we're, we're getting like so many biblical references. Christianity references whereas in the craft it was it was it was a, a fake religion with Manon and stuff because Manon isn't an actual god that exists in real life I don't get it because Adam also mentioned Manon in the name of Manon it was like he just he said Manon earlier but now he's talking about Christianity but Manon is like not associated with Christianity. He's like completely different. He's like he's like almost pagan like. I don't know. He says things like we are your kings. We are not in your image. We are your rulers <laughs> and kings. And he made like that book about masculinity and I feel like it's trying to like do like a subtle insight in the idea that Adam is like sexist and a little chauvinistic and he doesn't like Lily because she's a woman with power. Um feel like they could have adapted on that more. I'll talk about it after I finish the movie. Anyway, all the girls wake up from being yeeted across the forest and they start chanting their respective elements and then they chant some more shit to entrap him into a circle of fire and then he gets burnt alive. He, he doesn't even scream or anything. He, he's just silent. Screams, Lily! And then is silent again and then he just burns to death. And that is it. That's how they defeat him. It's very, it's very not climatic at all. After that, we cut to the next day. Lily goes to an asylum and they do this thing where it's like, oh, I came to talk to. And then they're like, okay, don't know why they never mention her name. They don't mention the name at all. They're just like, I, I'm here for this person. Um, I'm looking for it. And then she goes and sees that person, aka Nancy from the original craft, and that's what makes this movie a sequel because they got Feruza Bulk. And the only reason why it's a sequel is because they have Feruza Bulk. Is that how you say her name? I'm not too sure. They got Nancy in it. That's really what makes it a sequel. If she wasn't in it, if she wasn't in this movie, I would call this more of a soft reboot than like 
an actual sequel because if you've watched the movie, it's basically a soft reboot, just a worse version, really. And that's the movie. The movie ends on that. Very anticlimactic, really. Now, is this movie the worst movie to ever exist in all of humanity? No. However, I feel like this movie just could have been a standalone movie that is not associated with the craft by any means necessary. The only reason why it's like called The Craft Legacy and is a sequel to The Craft is in order to get people to watch the film. That's literally the only reason why they do this because if this wasn't associated with the original craft, no one would watch this movie, okay? If this wasn't associated with the craft, I wouldn't have watched this movie, okay? Honestly, it's not that this movie is bad, it's just average. It's it's forgettable, really. There's no elements in this movie that makes it stand out to any other movie in existence. Now listen, do I think the craft is the absolutely best and perfect movie in the world about witchcraft. No, that spot is reserved for Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban. I want to review it as a standalone movie, but I feel like that's hard because it really is marketed as a sequel. The, the only reason why it's associated with the craft is so people can watch it. So I feel like I have to compare it to the craft, but as a standalone movie, it's not bad, but like, like if we were to do it from like a one to 10 scale of ranking movies, at number 10 would be like Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. At number seven, I would say The Craft. At number one, I would say the movie Wish Upon, which I made a video about. It's a similar kind of concept of a girl being able to use magic to get what she wants. It's a shit movie, okay? And in between that scale, I would rank The Craft Legacy at like a four. <laughs> so let's talk about the things that I like about this movie because that's gonna be a shorter section, okay? Things I like about this movie, Timmy's character, now, Timmy is this movie's version of Chris, and in comparison, Timmy is a much more well-rounded, more developed character. He's more dimensional in the original 1996 movie. Chris is more of a plot device rather than an actual character, whereas Timmy, I can very much well believe, he's his own person. After that, I would say the message, I guess, is nice about girls sticking it to the man and being friends in the end, diverting from the original ending of the original craft. Now, in order to try and make this fair, to make it seem like I'm not just like this craft fangirl who thinks the movie's absolutely perfect, I have critiques of the original movie itself. I think the third act of the original craft is a little quick, just like how I think in this movie, the third act is also incredibly quick. But in the original, um, I feel like when it comes to the girls, you know, separating, when it comes to the girls going against each other, when it comes to the girls going against Sarah, that could have been done better, that, that could have been prolonged a bit. We could have had a more gradual uh, betrayal rather than it being quite sudden. Again, I could say the exact same thing for this movie. The whole betrayal is not really a betrayal, but we'll get into that later. And in The Craft, I feel like there are characters that are a little underdeveloped, not really established as characters, like Lirio. Who is she? Why is she there? What does she do? She has magic, but, you know, we don't really know her you know she has that special curtain in her store and it's like you can't go in there and then once it's revealed what's behind the curtain that room isn't used Sarah just kind of runs in there and then just kind of runs away and again um 
this is just a minor critique, I guess, with Chris. He's not really an established character. His character arc is just a uh, dick, pet, rapist, dead. That's it. But at the same time, I understand why he's not really an established character because the movie is about teenage girls for teenage girls. Like, personally, I don't really give a shit about Chris being a more dimensional character. I'm only mentioning that because Timmy is a more dimensional character in comparison to Chris. Basically, my biggest complaint about the original Craft movie is that there's not more of it. Like, it, the movie could have easily been two hours long. You could have added way more extra scenes in it. Now, back to this remake of The Craft. While I think it's great that they've made Timmy a well-rounded character, by doing that, none of the other characters are established at all. In terms of making Timmy a well-rounded character, all the other girls, apart from Lily, do not exist, really. They do not have their own motivations, they do not have their own stories. And that is my biggest complaint in this movie, is that everything is just a little bit underdeveloped. Here's the thing, these girls are meant to be outcasts, right? But I do not get that impression. They get an odd look in the the cafeteria like twice but that's not really enough to warrant them being outsiders and the weirdos of the school because that's the thing in the original craft even though they all wore uniforms you could very much tell that the group of girls were the weirdos you know by the way that they were dressed and that's one complaint i've seen people made about this movie is that the aesthetic is different. You know, they don't have the goth aesthetic that was in the original film. And personally, I don't really care for that. I don't really mind that they're not all gothic looking people. You can still be an outsider and not have to dress like Nancy Downs. Painting people as being outsiders isn't just done through the clothes that they wear. I also think that's a thing that they missed, is that they made it a public school rather than like a Catholic school. Because I know in America, with religious schools, they wear uniform. Over here in the UK, everyone wears a uniform anyway. But you know, in the original film, that was the big contrast because prior to things like Harry Potter, wizardry and witchcraft was seen as like satanic, you know? And it's the contrast of a Catholic school with witchcraft. There's the obvious contrast there to it. However, overall, I'm not too fussed over the outfits that they're wearing. My problem is, is that we are told rather than shown that these girls are outcasts. Here's the thing, we have got the characters Tabby, Lords and Frankie, you know, we've got a black girl, a transgender girl, and a girl who's obsessed with Twilight, okay? All of these, you know, attributes are meant to tell the audience that, you know, they are bullied because they are these things, right? But you cannot just be like, oh, she's black, so she obviously experiences racism in school. Like, that may be true, but you have to show it, okay? You can't just let the audience assume that and just like let it be. Because we get the scene when they do the, the two truths, one lie scene where Tabby is like, I wish I had more black friends. I am scared for my brother's safety every day. But that is the extent that we get of racism in this movie, and I understand that this is meant for, like, you know, a younger audience in the original craft. However, you shouldn't, like, you know, I want to, I don't want to say it's censoring it, but it's like, you're allowed to show 
those kind of things in movies. That's the thing. In The Craft, you had the character Laura Lizzie, who was a racist and was racist against Rochelle. You have physical bullying examples there. Whereas in this movie, there's no example of actual bullying because of prejudice, right? The exact same thing can be said for Lords, who is a trans girl. And when it comes to Frankie, there's nothing inherently about her that's, like, worth bullying. I mean, she's a little cringe in the movie. She's a little... She's a little much, but, you know, I can't really see her being bullied and, like, her being affected by it. That's the thing. We're meant to believe they are the outcasts. I just don't get an impression. And that's the thing. In this movie, the only character who gets explicitly bullied is Lily because she has her period, which is honestly like the weakest thing to bully a girl over, you know? In the movie, we see like a thing written on the locker saying Lisa is a slut. Now, at first I thought Tabby was Lisa because I wasn't keeping track of the names. I have no I, I like I literally have a cast list out here seeing the names because I cannot remember any of the names, god damn it. I thought at first Tabby was named Lisa and she did that to be like yeah, don't say that shit about me. But no, Lisa is a character that doesn't exist in this movie. It's just a random name on a random locker and, you know, Lovey being like, oh, I'm gonna be, you know, fuck the patriarchy and burn it out kind of stuff. We don't see any personal experiences. It's like with Lords. We get the scene of a bully bullying a LGBT kid and Lords makes his coat turn into the pride flag. But it's like, it's not Lords who's being bullied, it's this other kid who's being bullied. And it's like, they're acting as good Samaritans rather than doing what they want to do, having personal vengeance. And that is my critique with this movie is that all of these characters are kind of like on this moral high ground. They're meant to be great and selfless people, but it's just not realistic. You cannot have purely selfless characters, you know? If you go back to the craft, they all have their personal motivations that we can understand, but at the same time, what they wish for is not exactly 100% selfless. So for example, you know, Sarah, Sarah's wish, you know, is to have Chris like her, and she wishes for that because Chris was an absolute arsehole to her, you know? He tricked her and, and told the whole school that she was a slut, and she's mad at that, so she wishes for him to like her, and that's the thing, that kind of wish is selfish, but we understand why she wishes for it. She's not just wishing for it out of the blue, out of nowhere. She has a reason to do that wish, but at the same time, as an audience, we know she, she could wish to, like, you know, for world peace or for you know, world hunger to end or something selfless like that. But no, she she uses a selfish wish, but we understand why she does the wish. That's the thing. The craft characters are more believable human beings because they do selfish things, but not to such a great extent that it makes them unlikable. That's the thing. None of None of these girls in this movie do anything that's selfish to make them a more rounded out character. I mean, I guess you you have Lily masturbating to fucking woke Timmy's jacket, but like the scene is just it's one scene. She does she says like two lines, he comes up to the room, they kiss and then he fucking dies. So it doesn't it doesn't 
it doesn't build up to anything you know that's the thing with chris it was a re- originally kind of funny he 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 gets turned into like basically like sarah's pet and at first he's harmless you know she makes him carry his bags and shit like that and then later in the movie he he like you know wakes up sarah in the middle of the night by like going to her house which is a little bit it's a little bit concerning but nothing physical nothing physically dangerous and then it escalates to him trying to sexually assault her there's a gradual progression from like not concerning to like mildly concerning to like majorly concerning whereas this movie does not have that it's just like oh lily did a slightly selfish wish and then all of a sudden death (laughs) there's no progression there's no build up when timmy becomes woke timmy there's no i there's no signs of it having side effects you know because inherently wishing for someone to become a better person is a more selfless wish than wishing for someone to like fall in love with you because in both cases they want revenge on this character of a white teenage arsehole boy right but in this case in the craft they make it more about him treating people in general as people whereas in the original craft it was for Sarah just to have some satisfaction to like make fun of Chris really. And that's my biggest problem is that these characters, they're too, they're just not established enough. They don't feel like real people. Another thing is that at the beginning of the movie, at the end of the movie, they all feel like the same people. I do not feel like they have changed at all. The three girls are just not developed enough at all to even change character and even with Lily the protagonist I feel like she's sort of the same person at the end as she is in the beginning the only thing that's different is that she's she's gained like a little bit of power but even then she doesn't even have power because it's like the message is together we're stronger and we have more power but even then I didn't even get that impression because the girls defeated Adam so quickly like there was there was no fight, you know. I'm pretty sure Sarah's and Nancy's little quarrel at the end of the movie was much longer than the final boss fight in this because the girls don't really struggle in this. The only times they struggle is they get flamed once and like that's it. That's that's all that's all the suffering they face in this. You know, whereas in the craft you know, the girls specifically go after Sarah and, like, her personal weaknesses. They stage her dad dying. They write up a fake suicide note. They reopen Sarah's self-harm scars and stuff like that to torment her until Sarah eventually is able to compose herself, get the power of Manon and defeat them. Whereas with this, it's just, oh, I fling you across... You pass out for a minute, then you wake up, and then you burn me alive. It doesn't have the same impact. Moving on to the villain of this movie, Adam, or the X-Files guy. As a villain, it was kind of weird. I mean, when, when Lily walked down and saw the whole, like, cultish thing with the finger snapping... It was like immediately confirmed that he's the villain of this, okay? And the thing is, like, I don't mind that it's not like the original script of like the girls betraying each other, but Adam as a villain, just not well characterized. What are his motivations? I understand that he he has like this, you know, desire for power and it's corrupted him exactly the same way it, it it has for Nancy that was the whole problem with Nancy is that she was power hungry and you know she kind of got addicted to it and it led to get to her mind I'm assuming that's the same motivations for Adam just not done well 
I don't, because that's the thing, I don't know anything about Adam other than he's like some motivational speaker and is a warlock. Literally, that's all I know. And he has three sons, which by the way, what happened to them? After Adam died, we don't get like a conclusion you know, we don't we don't know what's happened to his sons. We did they find his body? What happened? What nothing we don't know. <laughs> Cause that's the thing. There was there were so many things in this movie that are done and that are just kind of put to the side. I mean, like, you know, you got Timmy having a relationship with Isaiah and you know I'm assuming that like Adam is meant to represent this toxic masculinity and is misogynistic and is homophobic it's it, that's not explicitly implied but based on this movie that's what I am getting from it if, if you just watch the movie you could probably understand what I'm talking about but you know when Timmy dies that's just thrown to the side we don't know any of the sons. Are they warlocks? Were they in on it? Were they not? I don't know. I don't fucking know anything. Because, you know, that's the thing. What made the original craft so memorable and what makes it stand out is that the villain is not your typical villain. So the main villain of the story is Nancy, who starts off as a friend and then becomes a foe. And... It's great because Nancy is a well-established character. You know, she has an abusive stepfather and she lives in a trailer and her life is just really miserable and we can feel sympathetic for her. But at the same time, we see the gradual derail of her character into insanity. And and that's the thing. I feel like when it comes to the craft legacy, they were trying you know, to be feminist a little too much. Now listen, I'm a feminist. However, I feel like a lot of directors, when they have the intention of it being overtly feminist, it is often not done that well. You know, feminism isn't just, oh, group of girls sticking it to the man and girl power, uh uh-huh. You know, in in the craft, you you could say the craft is a feminist film because it is, you know, a bunch of teenage girls gaining power and while sticking it to the man. Just because the girls turn on each other doesn't make it anti-feminist. The reason why, you know, the girls turn on each other is because Nancy killed Chris. However, it's not that Sarah is mad that she killed Chris because she liked Chris. She's mad that she killed Chris because she killed somebody, full stop, you know? And it's obvious that, you know, Nancy killed Chris not for the sake of defending Sarah, but because she has a personal vendetta against Chris. Would I say The Craft is a feminist film? Sure. You know, it's got female characters who are strong and empowered. You know, it's it's like saying having a female villain is misogynistic. It's not. <laughs> I do not mind the fact that the villain is kind of meant to have, like, toxic masculinity and, like, misogyny because those characteristics and traits are not good they should be associated with bad people however the execution is just not there you can't just have subtle implications we need to see more of it you know if if you want to betray adam as like this power hungry slightly chauvinistic guy you know have him treat lily unfairly towards his own sons You know, like, there's a scene where Lily goes to sit on the sofa, but all the boys are sitting on it, and Adam's like, hey, make way for Lily to sit on the sofa, showing that he's, like, a nice guy. But what you could have done instead is have him not care about Lily sitting on the nice sofa, and she can sit on the cheap chair if you really wanted to. The problem is, is that I'm trying to give criticism on how to make Adam a more fleshed out character, 
But the thing is, is that he's just so underdeveloped that I'm not even too sure what the, like, I'm not even too sure what he's meant to be. I'm not too sure what the director and writers were trying to portray him as. And because, because I don't even know what type of character he's meant to be, I'm just assuming. It's hard to, you know, say how to improve his character when I don't even know what his character is meant to be in the first place. I'm sorry, this wig, this wig is getting uncomfortable and taking it off. Moving on to the character of Timmy. Now I said that one of the good things about this movie is the characterization of Timmy and I still stand by that. The only problem with Timmy's arc is that he dies so suddenly. Now, as this movie's version of Chris I wasn't surprised when he died. I was just disappointed in the execution because we do not see him die. We are told he dies, okay? In both the original and the sequel, you know, Chris and Timmy's death is, you know, it's a turning point. It, it's what kind of kicks in the third act of the movies. But the difference is, is that, you know, in the original craft, we saw Chris die. And honestly, you know, Chris's death is one of probably the most memorable scenes of the movie, mainly because of Nancy, as always. But the thing about this scene is that it's Nancy, the villain, who does the killing in front of Sarah, the protagonist. And, you know... Sarah gets to see Nancy kind of become a little bit deranged and power hungry and mad. That's what kicks in her wanting to bind Nancy to stop her from doing harm. It's what it, it's what instigates the third act. Hello, editing Natalie here again. I just thought of another point that I should have mentioned. Um, while we're on the topic of, like, the binding process, in The Craft Legacy, the binding scene is useless. It adds nothing to the plot in terms of functionality. Because the thing is, is that they bind Lily from not being able to do magic, and that is effective for about three seconds or so when Lily is in the forest and she she tries to fight against Adam but she's unsuccessful because they bound her but then Im they immediately unbind her and then they just use the magic it's completely useless it doesn't serve any purpose because in the original craft when Sarah tries to bind Nancy it becomes unsuccessful and because Nancy knows that Sarah tried to bind her she gets furious and that's what kickstarts kind of the third act because Nancy can no longer trust Sarah. That's all I wanted to say. Whereas in The Craft Legacy, I feel like it's just done for shock value rather than actually kickstarting anything. Because the thing is, is that with the third act, it is all instigated by the villain. It's all done by Adam. The girls do little in the movie to move the plot forward. You you need to build up a character and gradually, you know, kill them off. You can do a shock sudden kill scene, but the death needs to be like, you know, justifiable we understand why chris dies because he tried to sexually assault sarah whereas in this movie he dies under mysterious you know circumstances we are told he killed himself but it, it's all very mysterious but it's not done in a good way you know it's fine to have mysterious deaths it's just this movie doesn't do it in a good way. We are told Adam killed Timmy because Lily had influenced him. Because Adam is just obsessed with power and control and order. And so because I'm assuming Timmy was part of like the cult thing that was happening prior to the movie. And so because 
Lily did a spell on him. He didn't like that, so he just killed him. I think... So from what I understand, Timmy gets killed because Timmy was under Lily's influence. So in my head, I'm just thinking of a better way to execute this idea. Because Adam is meant to be this all-powerful warlock or whatever, you know? And I feel like he just could have been a bit more intelligent in his plan to take Timmy down. You know, so like, instead of just killing him then and there, we don't even get a scene of him dying. Adam could have devised a plan to put a spell on Timmy for Timmy to become a little bit unhinged, for him to become a little bit deranged. And the girls start thinking, oh, oh, did we cause that? Did, you know, it, are we facing consequences for putting a spell on him? Make the girls doubt themselves and then I don't know put a spell on Timmy to then make him attack Lily and then Lily in having to defend herself has to kill Timmy and then has to live with the guild knowing that she killed Timmy and because she killed Timmy the other girls you know think she's dangerous so they put a you know they bind her to stop her from using magic like I am already coming up with a better plot for this movie, just on the spot. Give me an hour and a typewriter, I can write you a better script. That's just my point. You build Timmy up, and then just throw him out the window. Useless. Overall, did I think the movie was a pile of horse shit? Not necessarily. I think I've discussed all of my points. I will probably think of more points by the time I turn the camera off because that's just how my mind works. Uh, but that's it. That's it. Please like and subscribe if you like this video and want more of this type of content. I really enjoy looking at movies and reviewing movies. They're my favourite type of videos to make. Um, so yeah. Peace. Okay, but I've got one question. How the fuck did Nancy get pregnant?